The Formation of the Atom by Annie Besant, read by Dave Marsland of Cardiff Theosophical Society. The Formation of the Atom The third Logos, the Universal Mind, begins his creative activity by working on the matter drawn in from the infinite space on every side for the building of our solar system. This matter exists in space in forms incognizable by us, but is apparently already shaped to the needs of vaster systems. For we have been told by H. P. Blavatsky that the atomic subplanes of our planes make up the first or lowest cosmic plane. If we think of the atoms of that cosmic plane as symbolized by a musical note, our atoms, as formed by the third logos, may perhaps be symbolized by the overtones of such a note. What seems clear is that they are in close relation to the atoms of space, correspond with them, but are not, in their present form, identical with them. But the seven types of matter that become our atoms are indicated in the matter drawn from space to form the solar system, and are ultimately reducible again to them. H. P. Blavatsky hints at the repeated sevenfold division into atoms of lower and lower grade, when she writes, One cosmic atom becomes seven atoms on the plane of matter, and each is transformed into a centre of energy. That same atom becomes seven rays on the plane of spirit, separate till the end of the Kalpa, and yet in close embrace. Outside the limits of a universe, this matter is in a very peculiar state. The three qualities of matter, inertia, mobility and rhythm, are balanced against each other and are in a state of equilibrium. They might be thought of as existing as a closed circle, quiescent. In fact, in some ancient books, matter in its totality is described in this state of inertia. It is also spoken of as virgin. It is a celestial Virgin Mary, the ocean of virgin matter, that is to become the mother by the action of the third Logos. The beginning of creative activity is the breaking of that closed circle, throwing the qualities out of stable into unstable equilibrium. Life is motion, and the life of the solar Logos, his breath, as it is poetically called, touching this quiescent matter, through the qualities into a condition of unstable equilibrium and therefore of continual motion in relation to each other. During the life period of a universe, matter is ever in a condition of incessant internal motion. H. P. Blavatsky says, Fohat hardens and scatters the seven brothers, electrifies into life and separates primordial stuff, or pre-genetic matter, into atoms. The formation of the atom has three stages. First, the fixing of the limit within which the ensouling life, the life of the Logos in the atom, shall vibrate. This limiting and fixing of the wavelength of the vibration is technically called the divine measure. This gives to the atoms of a plane their distinctive peculiarity. Secondly, the Logos marks out, according to this divine measure, the lines which determine the shape of the atom, the fundamental axes of growth. The angular relation of these, which determines the form, being that of the corresponding cosmic atom. The nearest analogy to these are the axes of crystals. Thirdly, by the measure of the vibration and the angular relation of the axes of growth with each other, the size and form of the surface, which we may call the surface or wall of the atom, is determined. Thus in every atom we have the measure of its ensouling life, its axes of growth and its enclosing surface or wall. Of such atoms the third Logos creates five different kinds, the five different measures implying five different vibrations, and each kind forms the basic material of a plane. Each plane however various the objects in it, has its own fundamental type of atom, into which any of its objects may ultimately be reduced. 